Lambs, welcome, welcome, welcome to a new special episode of Love and Murder, the weekly true crime podcast discussing relationships gone terribly wrong, where our motto is, you're either someone's last love or their first murder. I'm your host, Kai, and this week, I am not joined by Rick. Like I said in our last episode, right now we are on the back end getting a bunch of new episodes together for y'all and just building our catalog so as not to miss any more deadlines, no matter what happens, whether I get sick, just no matter what happens, you will not miss an episode of Love and Murder. So in the meantime, we are doing mini episodes. And in this week's mini episode, we are giving you a glimpse inside of our Patreon with crazy crime. So we usually post our Patreon episodes on Tuesday or Wednesday, and it's a compilation of crazy crimes. These crazy crimes today is really going from bad to despicable. So you don't want to miss out. As a reminder... Our show discusses true crime cases told in the form of a story with mystery, suspense, and just a little bit of humor sprinkled on top, but never at the expense of the victim. Be sure to subscribe to Love and Murder on whatever platform you're on, as well as give us a review right now so you don't forget. If you're new here, obviously listen to the episode first, and then please rate us. And also, welcome and thanks for joining us. I spoke about our Patreon briefly, so head on over to our Patreon if you like this episode, which is a brief insight into our Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash love and murder, and subscribe. We have options started at only $1. Talk about that later. Now, on to the show. So like I said before, in today's episode, we have some crazy crime to give you, which is a brief insight into our Patreon group. Uh, We usually do bonuses, which is crazy crime over there. One of the bonuses category are crazy crimes over there. And so in this week's episode, we're going to give you four cases, which are going to start off as bad and progressively get worse. I don't know what is wrong with people, but we are going to see some of the worst of the worst in this episode. So spoiler alert, grab your butts, guys. This is going to be bad. Our first case is a case of a love triangle gone ugh, terribly wrong. Amandeep Kaur, 32, and Gujinder Singh, 27, were having an affair. Because Amandeep Kaur is actually married. Her husband, Devender Singh, 35. Amandeep and Davinder had actually married in India in 2002 and immigrated to New Zealand in 2007. Nothing is really told about their marriage, like if it was an abusive one, if they had a, a happy marriage or anything like that. But Amandeep started her affair with Gurjinder in March of 2014. And I apologize if I'm saying these names wrong. Now, Gurjinda actually worked with her. So it was one of those things where I guess you see this person every day at work. And instead of controlling yourself, you get into a relationship, although you're married, which on this podcast, we always tell you, do not have extramarital affairs. So she started seeing him in March of 2004. However, after a while, both of their spouses uh, found out. So dude, good gender is actually married too. And both of their spouses found out that, you know, they were having an affair. So they promised each other, you know, they promised their respective spouses that they were going to stop the affair. They were going to be respectful of their spouses and not cheat anymore. Well, that's what they said, but actually in secret, they kept seeing each other. They would write notes to each other in both English, Hindi, Punjabi, and, you know, just basically promise to continue seeing each other. So I'm just wondering, what is this, high school? Like, y'all are, come on now, are you serious? And if you wanted to keep seeing each other, why don't you just get a divorce? What is with this whole, let's have an extramarital affair? Do you want to know how they found out about the affair? Well... Gurjinda's wife found out about it first through Facebook messages. These people are acting like they're freaking 15. So she found the Facebook messages. She confronted her husband and then she informed Devender 
about the affair. Like your wife has been sleeping with my husband. And that's how they both found out about the affair. On August 7th, 2014, Amandeep and Devender went to get some dinner. So they were going to actually pick up the dinner, take it home instead of do delivery. So on their way to the restaurant, they decided to stop in parking lot to talk, possibly to talk about their relationship, possibly just to see where they were going, to see if this was fixable, to you know ensure that she'd stop talking to Gajinder. They just were, they just stopped to talk. Then out of nowhere, some guy comes to the car and is like, give me your cell phone. And Davender resisted. And then the guy stabbed him through his window. So I guess he probably had a crack in the window enough for somebody to get their hand in there. So stabbed him through the window in the neck with so much force that they nearly decapitated him. So basically he didn't die instantly. He just slowly bled to death in the car with... Amandeep sitting next to him. So, of course, Amandeep called the cops and relayed the situation to them. And the cops went on to investigate to find out who this person was. So, first of all, things didn't start adding up because when they watched the video, they clearly saw Gurjinda there. They clearly saw he was the one with the knife and everything. And they're, you know, they're like, why? Why was it? Why was he there? Then doing more investigations, they actually found handwritten notes. Remember those notes I was telling you all about? They found handwritten notes between Amandeep and Grujinder. And basically the notes just said it all. Because you know what we say at Love and Murder is if you're going to commit a crime, make sure you have what? As much evidence on your person, around your person as you possibly could, preferably in your handwriting, and then tell everybody who you know and everybody that you don't. So basically, they had notes in their in their handwriting. They wrote it out because, you know, they were caught cheating and their spouses were looking at their respective phones. So they figured they couldn't call, they couldn't text, so they wrote notes. So one of the notes said, Lali, if everything goes well today, do not spare him. He made me suffer a lot, really. I do not want to live with him. Love you. That's just one of the the notes. Now that all of this was revealed, they had to ask her, okay, why is this guy going after your husband? So then she had to come out and say, well, you know, I'm sorry. I did lie. It wasn't a robbery. It wasn't some random guy. It was my boyfriend. Yes, I was having an affair. Um, but then my boyfriend and my husband got into a dispute. So that's the real story. I know before I lied, but now this is the real story. So then they were like, well, yeah, but what about these notes in your handwriting? Basically saying that you and him were plotting to kill your husband. What about those? And she was like, uh, <laughs> but really she still kept her, her story going that, you know, she didn't do anything, blah, blah, blah. They arrested them. And once they were arrested and they came to the uh, police station, they were interviewed separately by police, which they, you know, they weren't still giving each other up. It was still a whole story in the air. Nobody knew what happened. However, after that, they put them in the same room and then left them, you know, just we'll be right back. We're going to go look over some paperwork. We have to go book some other people. We'll be right back. When they were put in the same room, they started talking in Punjabi. I guess they thought nobody else speaks Punjabi, like nobody else learns languages. Like, I don't know what they were thinking, but they started talking in Punjabi and they were talking about who's going to be able to, who's going to be the one to take the fall for the murder. Um, what's going to be their relationship in the future? Like, what if you go to jail and I stay out? How are we going to stay together? And they also went more in detail on to, as to why they killed Amandeep's husband and not Gurjinda's wife. They said they did that. They killed her husband because he wasn't willing to just end everything with his wife and his family. So I want to take care of my wife. I want to do the right thing. So let's go ahead and murder your husband. Like, what? So then they went to trial. And when they went to trial, each one of them, the, each one of them sang like a bird on the other one. So Amandeep said it was all him. She had nothing to do with it. She got to the car. You know, her husband was dead. Uh, Gajinder said 
he was coming to the car to talk like a reasonable human being and hash it out. And by the time he came there, he had just finished seeing her. He witnessed it. He witnessed her slashing her husband's neck. So the court was like, you know what? Both of y'all are BS. This is lies. And both of them were found guilty of murder. But then they were sentenced to only 17 years. That's the shocking part about it. So he slashed him so deep that the coroner said that his head was almost severed. That's how deep that was. So like I said, they were both put in jail, both still blaming each other. Yeah, nobody's at fault. They didn't do anything, blah, blah, blah. In September of 2017, Amandeep actually wanted to contest contest her conviction and her sentence on the ground that her husband was sexually, psychologically, and physically abusive towards her throughout their whole 12 years of marriage. This is what she said. So she basically said that when she was in counseling, while she was in prison, this all came to light. You know, suddenly she remembered. Suddenly, you know, she understood what him asking her to make him a sandwich really means just whatever she during counseling as she says this is when she realized that she had more evidence and that evidence was that he was abusive and this is why she had to murder him i mean sounds like you're trying to get your case dismissed or you're trying to get out of jail early due to self-defense plea i mean does it doesn't it sound like that to, to you So the court said, nope, you're not getting out. We're not going to appeal this. Basically, she had a, quote, history of manipulative behavior and chronic lying to suit circumstances. So basically, they saw through her lies and they said, no, you're staying in here. And that was that. And now the funny thing is she left behind. She killed the father. She went to jail and she left behind a 13 year old boy because she wanted some dude. I mean, I don't understand that. But that is that story. That is the least crazy story for tonight. And what do y'all think about this story in the comments below? My favorite part was when they were in the interrogation uh, room and they started speaking Punjabi like you can't do Google Translate. I mean, I know obviously back then you couldn't do it, but like only if you looked a certain way you spoke Punjabi, you don't know who speaks what. So be careful. And that is the case of Amandeep Gujinder and Davinder. So the next episode, this is where it starts going downhill, guys. So get the apple juice ready so you can calm your nerves. So this one comes from my neck of the woods, Pennsylvania. We're on January 19th, 2016 at around 2 a.m. A 911 call came in because an old grandmother had died. This one wasn't from natural causes. So on that day, Kevin Anthony Harlow Jr., who is 23, got into a fight with his mom. So basically, you know, his mom was like, get a job. He was like, why you provide everything? His mom was like, grow up. He was like, why? You know, I'm like Peter Pan. I'm good. He got, you know, annoyed with his mom trying to tell him to mature because why would you want to mature? And he grabbed her up and then sexually assaulted his mother. You heard me right. He was angry at her and he sexually assaulted his mother before she fought him and she was able to get away. And when she did that, she went ahead in the powder room on the first floor of the house. So then he couldn't find her. So he went to his grandmother. She was in the kitchen and he grabbed her, pulled her into the bedroom and sexually assaulted his grandmother. What? is going on here. So his mother came out of the powder room. I probably when she heard her mother screaming and she grabbed a broom and started hitting him with the broom handle, but that didn't stop him. And he continued fighting her. And then his sister came in and tried to break up what was going on. So he's just going crazy, crazy. And the mother finally ran and hid in the utility room. And then his sister ran away from him to an upstairs bedroom. And then he got a knife. So I guess he was like, oh, y'all are going to run. I'm going to show you running. So he got a knife and then went back to his grandmother's bedroom where he just started stabbing her in the chest. Like for no reason, he was having an argument with his mom. And so for some reason, the anger turned to his grandmother and rape. Like what's it? So yeah, he stabbed her up in the chest 
And then he went and got two more knives from the kitchen and then just kept stabbing her. Of course, somebody was able to call police. And when they arrived at 2.25 a.m., they found the grandmother really injured, like she was on her deathbed. And they tried to give her CPR, but she died not too long after that. And so after they interviewed everyone, they found out what happened and they uh, arrested him, Kevin. And he was charged with murder, aggravated indecent assault, and other charges. And after that, he was taken to Chester County Prison. Now, I guess people went and searched him up because they have a picture of his Facebook page that I'm, you know, I can look at. I'll put it in our Patreon, actually. Um, as long as some extra information from our first case, case I'm going to go ahead and put that in our Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash love and murder. If you want to see all of that stuff, basically extra stuff that if you're a free subscriber, you don't have access to, but if you go to our Patreon and choose one of the correct tiers, then you'll have access to this. But they're saying on his Facebook page, he had videos about, you know, quote, the U.S. government created ISIS and where he wrote under that video, like, quote, watch all of it. Maybe you can understand where I'm coming from. He also posted a video from AmericanMilitaryNews.com about ISIS threatening to attack Russia. And then they also noted that on February 15th, 2014, he wrote on his Facebook page, quote, this day can never be fair to guys like me. When it comes to women, I feel cursed, I swear. That's what he said. So the one thing that I noticed before I move on is that they're trying to make him out to look crazy. Like, oh, look at this, all what they're saying about 9-11, you know, propaganda, propaganda. They're trying to make it look like he's crazy. And I don't think that's a good tactic because he probably is already trying to make himself look crazy. Like he's probably going to use the insanity defense. So you're literally giving him uh, ammunition to work with. So why did this all happen? Well, apparently he went out with a guy friend on Monday night. He smoked some weed, marijuana, and uh, came back home and then asked his mother if his friend could stay the night. And his mom said no. And she told him that, you know, I'm not putting up with how you're acting any longer. So he got mad. He got mad. And he basically blamed his mom and his grandmother for as he says, preventing him from having a normal social life. He was saying that it's their fault he doesn't have a girlfriend, it's their fault he doesn't have friends, and everything like that. So um, he also wanted to smoke uh, marijuana in the house and they wouldn't let him. So, you know, that's also somehow preventing him from having a normal social life. I mean, like, honestly, honestly, he was 23 by this time. So leave, get your own place. Like, what are you talking about? This is, he, you're not five, leave. You're a grown man. So according to him, this is why he got so incest, so angry and, and, and went crazy like this. Now it was really difficult to find information on like what happened to him was to update. Cause last I saw, obviously he was arrested. He was held without bail, but I couldn't really, you know, really find like what happened, like when he went to trial or anything like that. Um, you know, they said, they said they were investigating this and a preliminary hearing was scheduled for Monday, February 1st. And that's like literally the last thing I could find. But then I did uh, look him up. He is registered on the sex offender site. Um, and they said that he is his convicted date. His conviction date was November 20th, 2017. And the offense that he was convicted of is attempted rape. Now, I'm pretty sure he raped both of them. So I don't know why they have it in here as attempted rape. And then what about murder? He killed his grandmother. So I don't understand. But literally, I could not find anything else. Um, but as of right now, it does, say, it does say he's incarcerated. I have no idea for how long. But he's been in there since 2017. And as of this recording, is 2022. So that is the depraved, depraved case of Kevin 
Anthony Havlo Jr. What do y'all think about this in the comments below? Let me know in the comments below. And also, if you have any updates, because I couldn't find anything. So if you have any updates, please let me know in the comments below as well. And the last crazy case we have for you. And the last crazy case we have for you comes out of Georgia. Oh man, I hope y'all are ready for this one. So a 47-year-old man named Owen O'Reilly was arrested when his neighbors called police on him because they saw his mom in a backyard pool. She was sitting in a backyard pool naked and basically he was hosing her off. So police arrived and <laughs> the craziest story unfolded. So get ready. They found out that his mother, Margaret O'Reilly, who he was hosing off in the backyard, was actually dead since 2015. The time of this story is 2018. So she had died late 2015. Nobody knew she had died. And they said, the neighbors said they hadn't seen her in two years. And then suddenly they're just seeing her sitting naked in a, like a, one of those little blow up kiddie pools. You know what I'm talking about? So seeing her in her backyard naked sitting there and he's just standing there with a hose, like holding her off. So they thought like, like maybe the son was abusing her. Maybe she had, um, Alzheimer's and, you know, the son was, I don't know, keeping her away from everyone. And, you know, it's just, come on, it's, it's kind of weird to see your somebody's son hosing them off in a little kiddie pool in their backyard and they're sitting there naked. So this is why the neighbors decided to call the cops. So like I said, they came, found out this is a corpse. This isn't actually like the person is no longer here. This is a corpse. And so of course, police are turning to him like, explain yourself. So he said, well, it's a simple explanation officer. So she died. Yeah. I mean, you can, you can see she's dead. She died, but you know, her welfare checks, I mean, if she's not going to use it, well, why not? I use it like, I, you know, so I've been, uh, keeping her body here. Um, you know, I've been keeping her in the freezer, the freezer that I got specifically for her, mind you. I mean, I wouldn't just do anything with my mom. Um, and I've been just collecting her welfare checks. So, you know, nobody else is using it. So I figured I would use it as anybody else would do. I mean, right. So of course that in itself is, you know, a felony. You can't be stealing welfare checks and everything like that. So they took him in and they took the body to uh, the coroner's office, which they then examined the body and they found something on it. So they went back to Owen and they're like, okay, so we found trace amounts of your sperm on the body. Can you explain that? And <laughs> Owen said, well, you know, I, I did keep her body to collect welfare checks, but occasionally, not, not all the time, but just sometimes I would indulge in sexual activities with my mom's corpse. <laughs> like I have no words. Like the police were just like, wow. But he said, Owen said, no, 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 no. You, you don't understand. It was like only when I'm quote really drunk or if my girlfriend pissed me off. This is literally what Owen said. So police were like, Okay. Yeah. And, uh, he, basically he was arrested. And according to worldnewsdailyreport.com with Georgia state law, quote, a person convicted of any sexual act with a dead human body involving the sex organs of the one and the mouth, anus, penis, or vagina of the other shall be punished by imprisonment for not less than one nor more than 10 years. So he already had the issue of welfare fraud and then now having intercourse with a corpse and not just a corpse. I just, I can't wrap my head around it. I'm not just any corpse, his mom. So yeah, <laughs> that is the story of Owen O'Reilly and whatever was brewing around in his head. 
So these are the three cases that I had for you as a glimpse into our Patreon's crazy crime. We kind of keep it loose and carefree over there. Crazy crime. It's usually stuff that you wouldn't really bring to like YouTube or you know, anything like that. So it's more of the crazier, shocking crimes that we do over there in our Patreon. And this this category is labeled as crazy crime. We also have serial killer corner, love obsessions. When we're recording, you hear the bloopers. So that's, you know, behind the scenes. Or if I'm cooking something, you can see my recipes. You could follow along. We also are be. We'll also be playing true crime games in there. So it's a lot of stuff going on in our Patreon. You also get commercial-free early release episodes of our free full-length episodes. So you'll get it before anybody else and you won't have the commercials in the beginning or in the middle. So it's just literally the story. Now you can join our Patreon by going to www.patreon.com forward slash love and murder. And we have tiers starting at only $1. And what that does is it does your donation. It's basically a donation and your donation does help us, you know, get better equipment, be able to hire help to help us make a better podcast, be able to do more research and bring you a better case, like all of this. And we are so very thankful for your donation because I know everything that's going on in the world right now, your money is very precious to you and you are donating some of it to us. So we are very, very thankful for whatever donations you can give. You could also give a one-time donation if you want. You could find our PayPal on our website, www.murderandlove.com. So whatever you want to donate, it's very appreciate it. Even if you want to be funny and donate 50 cents, we still appreciate it. So this is the kind of content that you would get under the crazy crime category in our Patreon. We look forward to seeing y'all over there. And this was just an insight into what we do in our exclusive group. Like I said, right now, host Rick and I are getting together episodes for you. So we don't miss a week ever again. And so this is why we're bringing you some shorter, different kind of episodes right now. But continue to stay tuned, subscribe, share, and rate. And we will be back next week with another episode of Love and Murder. Follow us on social media at facebook.com forward slash relationship crime, Instagram at Love Murder Podcast. Join our Facebook fan group by searching Love and Murder fan page in Google or Facebook, or by simply clicking the links in the show notes below. Find our awesome merch by going to our website, www.murderandlove.com, and clicking our shop in the menu above, and we will be having new merch coming out soon. And an easy and free way to help us out is by simply sharing this episode. Share it with your mom. Please don't hurt your mom. Share it with your grandma. Don't hurt your grandma. Share, 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 share. And as always, we end each episode by reminding you that it's all love and no murder, y'all. Bye.